Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the effects of kidney failure. This includes the effect on glomerular filtration rate and on electrolyte balance, and this is for the OCR spec. In the last few videos, we've looked at the functions of the kidneys in mammals. Remember that small molecules such as urea, water, and glucose are filtered out of the blood as it passes through the glomerulus. Ions such as the sodium ion and potassium ion are also filtered out of the blood. These molecules and ions pass into the Bowman's capsule. However, cells and large plasma proteins are too large to be filtered out of the blood. The fluid that passes out of the blood then makes its way along the proximal convoluted tubule. Here, useful molecules such as glucose are reabsorbed back into the blood. Now, under certain circumstances, the kidneys can work less efficiently or simply stop working altogether. This is called kidney failure. I'm showing you here the kidneys from a person with polycystic kidney disease. In this condition, the normal kidney tissue is gradually replaced with cysts filled with fluid. And this loss of healthy tissue can lead to kidney failure. Now, polycystic kidney disease is a genetic condition. However, kidney failure can also take place for other reasons. For example, certain viral infections can weaken the connections between the cells of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. High blood pressure can also damage the Bowman's capsule and the basement membrane. Now these form the filtering system of the kidneys. Under normal conditions, the filtering system stops blood cells and large plasma proteins from passing into the urine. However, if the filtering system is damaged, then these can pass through. So a kidney infection or high blood pressure can both lead to blood cells and plasma proteins being present in the urine. We're going to look at how we can use urine testing to diagnose medical conditions in a later video. Okay, now under certain circumstances, the kidneys may fail completely. This can have a number of effects. Firstly, urea will no longer be filtered out of the blood and will build up. This will be toxic to cells and can lead to death if not treated. Now, the kidneys also play a role in controlling blood pressure by maintaining the correct levels of water in the blood. So kidney failure can also lead to an increase in blood pressure, and this increases the risk of heart disease and stroke. As we've seen, ions such as sodium, potassium and chloride are filtered out of the blood by the kidneys. Scientists call these ions electrolytes, and excess electrolytes are removed from the body in the urine. So if the kidneys fail, then electrolytes build up in the blood. This affects the body's osmotic balance and can lead to death. Now, the kidneys also play a role in controlling the balance of calcium and phosphate ions in the blood. These ions are essential for healthy bones. So kidney failure can lead to bone weakness as the levels of these ions are no longer effectively controlled. Now, kidney failure can also lead to anemia. That's because the kidneys normally produce a hormone called erythropoietin. This hormone triggers the production of red blood cells by the bone marrow. If the kidneys fail, then erythropoietin levels will fall, and the level of red blood cells in the blood will decrease. This will reduce the ability of the blood to transport oxygen to the tissues, and the patient will experience fatigue. Okay, now a final effect of kidney failure can be joint pain. That's because abnormal proteins can accumulate in the blood and then form clumps in the joints. OK, now we can determine how well the kidneys are functioning by measuring the level of a chemical in the blood. This chemical is called creatinine. Creatinine is formed during the normal breakdown of muscle tissue by the body. The creatinine is released into the bloodstream and then filtered out of the blood by the kidneys. So if the kidneys are functioning normally, then the level of creatinine in the blood should be constant and relatively low. And this can be easily determined with a blood test. Now, the level of creatinine in the blood is used to estimate the filtration rate of the kidneys. Scientists call this the estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR. And this has the units centimeters cubed per minute. Now, if the blood creatinine level rises, then this can indicate that the kidneys are not filtering the blood as efficiently as normal. If the EGFR falls below 15 centimeters cubed per minute, then the level of filtration is so low that the patient has kidney failure. However, other factors can influence the EGFR. For example, the EGFR naturally decreases with age, 
So a healthy elderly person can have a lower EGFR than a younger person. Also, the level of creatinine in the blood is affected by a person's muscle mass. So a person with a higher muscle mass can have a higher level of blood creatinine, even though their kidneys are functioning normally. In the next video, we look at how kidney failure can be treated with dialysis.